space. Forward, arm. Ready? Two. Captain Susan Garment will now deliver the invitation. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your presence with us in all of life. We thank you for this opportunity that has at last come to honor the sacrifice, the arduous duty, the courage of the thousands who served on the patrol prison in World War II. We ask your blessing upon this ceremony. Do as read your life in Use it as a continual reminder to us of honor, of courage, dedication to the cause of freedom. And that it may serve to continue along the process of healing the wounds of war. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, uh, Chaplain. Yes, please be seated. On a squad parade, Rep. Admiral Bender, Admiral Couché, Captain Guill, Captain Oswitz, Captain Towser, Patrol Frigate veterans, fellow Coast Guard family members, and friends. My name is Manson Brown, and I am honored to serve as your Master of Ceremonies for today's dedication. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce to you the chairperson of the Patrol Frigate Reunion Association, <coughs> Mrs. Roberta Shotwell, who will deliver welcoming remarks. Mrs. Shotwell. Thank you, Commander Brown. Good morning. I'm really delighted to be here today. First of all, I want to recognize our Coast Guard veterans of the patrol frigates and their families. Today is our day. Public recognition of the contribution of our Coast Guard veterans who served on Navy patrol frigates during World War II. Thank you, Admiral Bender and Rear Admiral Pache for attending today. Your presence shows your personal commitment to lifting the veil off the achievements of the forgotten fleet. Our thanks to you, Captain Osgood, for your leadership in allowing the Patrol Frigate Reunion Association to place our monument here on your magnificent facility. Your support and that of your personnel has been overwhelming. Commander Manson Brown has been our project officer these past few weeks, and we wish to thank him for his help, support, and believing in us. His hard work and devotion to our cause has brought us to today. Commander, the patrol frigate veterans wish to extend to you an honorary membership in their association for your endeavors in our behalf. Finally, I want to welcome you all to today's dedication. If you don't know much about Coast Guard service in the patrol frigate fleet, I invite you to talk to these veterans that are here today at the conclusion of this dedication. It's a part of our 204-year history. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Robert. I'll share that membership. Ladies and gentlemen, we're privileged to have present with us today many Coast Guard veterans who served on patrol frigates during World War II. Because so little is written about their experience, it is appropriate for us to hear their story directly from a representative view. I'm delighted to introduce to you the former commanding officer of the USS Pocatello, Captain Sam Will, United States Coast Guard, retired. Captain Will. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Get closer, please. It's a real pleasure to meet with all of you at this time. There's very little that I can add to the stories that I've heard in this last few hours <laughs> at the motel where any of us are staying. However, I do want to tell a personalized story. In 1944, March, the Pocatello was placed in commission. Our crew represented just about every walk of life in the American sea. We had school teachers, we had school dropouts. We had, uh, fortunately, very few draftees. But all of our crew had been trained through the various schools that the Coast Guard and the Navy offered. And the only thing lacking was, believe it or not, protocol. When the Pocatello was commissioned, we were the flagship. Our Commodore, known to many of you, was Alan Winbeck. Winbeck had been a tactical officer at the Academy when at least three of us were cadets. As the tactical officer, he was a strict believer in protocol. All the courtesies. Immediately after commissioning, the Pocatello was ordered to the engineering dry dock company. Their yard was right here right across from the base. And one of the little niceties, since we had no ship store at the time, was that we could come across and shop at the exchange here. Now, to get back to Admiral Winbeck, as he became Admiral later, at the time he was three strikes. One day, he came from his little cabin box it just forward of the stack, probably the hottest spot on the ship except in the wardroom. And he looked aloft, and by golly, his absentee tenant was still flying, and he had been aboard for a number of hours. Well, he took immediate action. He came down to see me, because my cabin was a little cooler than his. <laughs> and uh, he laid it out in no uncertain terms that he was very much annoyed that he had been aboard for several hours and still his absentee was flying. Well, of course, I passed on this uh, information and uh, feeling to my officers. Next day, a man that most of you know about, Buddy Epson, had the watch, the OD. One of our crew members was a, had been, a professional boxer. And he had been punched a few times. But with very careful instruction, he could carry out any simple command. Edson coached this man very carefully that he was to watch down the pier, and if he saw a man in a blue suit with three great big gold stripes on his sleeve, walking towards the ship, he was to immediately come aft and tell Epson. <coughs> and then carried out a little further, he said, and if it turns out to be the Commodore, as soon as he steps aboard, we'll pull down that pennant. But Johnny understood this. And he stood his watch with that rifle. He just stared down that dock. He wasn't going to let any blue suit man with gold stripes get past him. Eventually, nothing had happened. Johnny's relief arrived. And Johnny passed the word to him very, very carefully. You watch, and if you see a man in a blue suit with three stripes on his sleeve, you go aft and you tell Buddy Epson. Mind you, it was Buddy. And Epson will look, and if it's the Commodore, down comes that, and the pennant wasn't up there. 
<laughs> Johnny picked up his rifle and he walked up and he hit Buddy on the shoulder and said, Hey, Buddy, how'd that guy get aboard? <laughs> that day, instead of going to Alameda, or going, yes, into Alameda and parking his car outside the yard, the commander had come over here and shot the exchange and then taken our boat and came aboard Taft. <laughs> We did, all of us, form excellent crews. <laughs> we did put together all the training that we had received. And we did great things, even those of us who did weather control. Thank you. And you know, if you look at your list of frigates, if you look at numbers 34 through 50, those distinguished frigates earned amongst them over 50 battle stars. They came from the consolidated yard down in San Pedro, which had the best record of production, to the degree that the first ships to go abroad out of San Pedro were the Long Beach and the Glendale, departed for Nomea, New Caledonia, the 1st of February, 1944. Quickly followed a week or so later by El Paso, San Pedro, Coronado, and then that whole list by the end of the, by the middle of the summer. Those ships participated, one or more of them, in every operation along the north coast of New Guinea, all the way up to Cape Sansibor, which was the jump-off point for Mindanao and Leyte that General MacArthur had decided upon. Three days before the major invasion on October 20th, 1944, Bisbee and Gallup escorted uh, fast destroyer transport secretly up to the offshore islands of Leyte to control the entrance. They went on that mission with the heartwarming message, there are no provisions for your return. The convoys into Leyte continued all through October, November, and December. On December 5th, a large convoy was the first to witness the kamikaze attacks. And in that convoy was Coronado and uh, San Pedro. A Liberty ship with many troops on board and supplies was hit and sunk. The convoy continued on with Coronado and, and San Pedro lingered to clean up the mess. And they picked up 420 survivors between the two ships. One of the ships of that group, Corpus Christi, also went uh, south to Nomea in May of 1944, but Corpus Christi slipped away and disappeared around Australia all the way to Fremantle, the port of Perth, where she operated as a anti-submarine uh, warning training vessel for a while. And out of Perth, <coughs> Corpus Christi distinguished herself on the 5th of February, 1945, when a large freighter transport was sunk in the South Indian Ocean, torpedoed, and the Australian and the U.S. Navy had just about given up when Corpus Christi all ahead pulled, spotted the wreckage and picked up 92 thirsty and sunburned survivors. Corpus Christi also held the record for a single ship's longest period of time away from the United States, the longest tour. She departed San Pedro end of May 1944 and returned to San Pedro October 1, 1945. 16 months. But she did have a good liberty port, Perth. Which can't be said for the ships that were in the Aleutian gang. Albuquerque served in the Aleutians the longest of any ship without a break returning to the States at Coast Guard or Navy during World War II. She departed uh, Seattle 4 April 1944 and returned 11 June 1945. Our sister ship Everett, BF-8, was only two weeks left in that long tour of duty. Albuquerque was also known as a rescue vessel. Uh, it was not thought in mind that Albuquerque is often referred to as 21 not Albuquerque. Remember 31 not Perk, Admiral Arlie Perk, the destroyer. Albuquerque went on two go-ahead rescue missions, one in 19, 
April 1944 and one in very foul weather, 14 December 1944. Our class ship, the Tacoma, poor old Tacoma, the first to launch, the first commission, the last to go to sea. Poor old Tacoma, failed sea trials, boiler room fire, hot bearings, was ordered to join the Albuquerque and effort in the Aleutians on June 27, 1943. She showed up 21 October, not 1944. She showed up 21 October, 1944. And lingered for four months and went back home for another full overhaul in preparation for the transfer of 28 frigates to the Russians. But poor old Tacoma might have had the last laugh after all. She did a marvelous job with the Russians. She was returned with the 28 frigates, all but one. The Belfast was lost while still in Russia, hands off uh, Kamchatka. Tacoma was one of the 13 that was recommissioned, along with Albuquerque and Everett. Albuquerque and Everett stuck together almost their entire lives. They parted company only when Everett went to South Korea and, and Albuquerque to Japan in 1952. But Tacoma operated in the Korean War and three battle stars and went to uh, Korea in 1953. And her old reciprocating up and downers were still pumping out 135 to 150 turns on the 23rd of February, 1973. And she was retired only a few months short of 30 years service. I think that says a lot for the frigate. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mr. Hendrickson. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Mr. Robert DeWitt, former crew member of the USS Casper. Thank you. I, uh, I took boats here very spot 50 <coughs> years ago. 17. When I went aboard the Casper, I was still 17. Had my 18th birthday shortly after. <coughs> it's almost unbelievable to see all these guys again. Anyhow, I, I want to say this. I served on the, the Casper during World War II. The Casper was undoubtedly the best of all the things. I have those that served on her to back me up. Granted, those off the other 74 frigates probably disagree with me, but like a good politician, we don't listen to them. But I'm here today to say a few words about something that's really dear to my heart, and that's the PFRA. The Patrol Frigate Reunion Association is made up of men off the all 75 of the frigates. Each and every one is as important as the other, and for each frigate, upheld through the tradition of the Coast Guard and performed flawlessly. The PFRA was founded in 1986 and now has found over 4,000 men who served in frigates. With 2,500 of them still alive and almost half of those as dues paying members of the PFRA. Not too shabby after half a century. At the PFRA reunions, we have the best of two worlds. We meet with those off our ship as well as those off the other frigates. Thus, we can accomplish many things. This moment we are, monument we are dedicating today is a prime example, for this was not the work of one frigate, but, the, but it was planned and the PFRA raised the money. The leadership of the PFRA made the arrangements as to where they would be located, to mount them, and the ceremony to dedicate them. As most of you know, we have another one that was just dedicated a short time ago in Baltimore. With the help of the fine officers and men of the Coast Guard, the PFRA, which are the officers and men of the frigate, this dream has been realized. Perhaps the best part of it all, it was brought, it was brought about by the men who served the members of the per Patrol Frigate Re Association. Thus, the following poem is dedicated to them. May this marker we dedicate through tears not be forgotten through the years. 
Like those that went before, we made history in the Second World War. Seventy-five frigates, part of the Coast Guard's fleet, 20,000 tars who would not retreat. It feels good down deep inside. We serve with patriotic pride, a common bond we'll always share with every sailor that was there. Now that we are about to fade away, let us say that was our day. Thank you, Mr. DeWitt. I must tell these three gentlemen, gentlemen, their ability to recall events from 50 years ago is astounding. I'm, I'm truly impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I now have the honor of introducing to you the Commander of Maintenance and Logistics Command Pacific, Rear Admiral Gordon G. Pichet. Admiral Pichet. Morning. Mr. DeWitt's going to be a hard act to follow after that uh, poem. That was really, really great. Thank you. Admiral Bender, Captain Gill, Captain Kauser, Mrs. Shotwell, members of the uh, Patrol Reun Frigate Patrol Reunion Association and their loved ones, members of the Coast Guard family, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor and a pleasure for me to be here today for this tribute to the Coast Guardsmen who manned the Tacoma-class patrol frigates. There are very few people left, as was just pointed out, even uh, in the Coast Guard who remember these three, those 300-foot, 1,400-ton ships. This is unfortunate because these ships and their crews contributed greatly to our country's defense during World War II. Their crews were called upon to complete a myriad of tasks, coastal and ocean uh, escorts, plane guard lookouts, rescue, medical, and resupply missions to remote outposts, weather, ocean weather stations, offshore security around vital bases, in the Atlantic and the Pacific, and submarine picket patrols in the war zone. When I get involved in these kinds of uh, ceremonies, I try to find some common ground. And uh, going through the list, I think I found the common ground. My first four years in the Coast Guard we were done on uh, weather patrols. They have the same uh, names as the weather patrols that uh, many of the frigates did. I uh, can't begin to understand what may have been like during the wartime, but uh, it was everything from uh, beautiful weather to uh, the ships would stand on their ears, and I imagine the patrol frigates uh, got the opportunity to stand on the areas also during some of that weather. In May of 1945, the patrol frigate Mobley sank a German submarine, and the foresight accepted the unconditional surrender of U-234. Patrol frigates were at Leyte Gulf, providing anti-aircraft support to the landing troops and then the supply lines once the beachhead was established. The crews valiantly fought off numerous waves of enemy planes, including the infamous kamikazes. Amazingly, through the patrol frigates, as a class, won more than their share of battle stars, such as the Glendale, which earned five. Not one of them was lost in the war. They are the only American warships to boast this distinction. I must also add that the Glendale earned another four of battle stars and the Korean Presidential Unit Citation during the Korean War. The monument we will be unveiling shortly will help inform everyone who passes by of the magnificent history of the Coast Guard manned patrol frigates. This monument will serve as a reminder of the courage, valor, and sacrifice of their crews. Mrs. Shotwell, Captain Gill, Captain Ozzett, will you please join me at the memorial?
gentlemen, the inscription on the monument reads, A well done to the officers and men of the United States Coast Guard who served aboard the patrol frigates during World War II. Their deeds are evidence of the best tradition of the United States Coast Guard. Also listed on the monument are the 75 patrol frigate ships. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could ask you to please stand and join me in a moment of silence to honor the memory of the ships and the men of the forgotten fleet, particularly those patrol frigate sailors who have crossed the bar. Please remain standing as Chaplain Garman will now deliver the benediction and we will retire the color. Chaplain Garman. Let us pray. Our gracious God, again we thank you for each one so valiantly served our country with patrol frigates. We offer to you the memories shared here, those spoken, and many, many more left unsaid, all symbolized in this monument. We ask your blessing upon us as we go forward, upon this monument, as it stands out to be read by all who pass by. That the memory of valor, of courage, our dedication to sacrifice will inspire each one of us and each one who pauses to learn and to remember of all that these patrol frigate crews have done. In your name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's dedication ceremony. All veterans and their families are invited to tour Coast Guard Island and the Coast Guard Cutter Boutwell starting immediately after the dedication ceremony and starting at the memorial area. All veterans and their families are also invited to attend a picnic lunch at the gazebo area starting at 11.30. Thank you all for attending. Thanks, Dad. Everybody. You know what I'd like you to do, Dad? Dad, do you know all the guys in the Casper here? Yeah. Can you get them all to go over there in that shade so I can take a picture of them? I'll get them for you if you can find them all. I don't know if you can locate them all, though. Leo, can you get all the Casper guys Mary? Oh, yeah. You got any more? You got any more? No? I'll get it. Must be two more. I'll get you all. We need a battery. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking about food. Hey, Dad. They thought he was in the draft. I see how much he is. Let's get them all over here in the shade. Over here. Got any more, Dad? Six guys. Joyce. Right here. You know where this is at? Over there.
Where are we going? All the girls, ladies, guys only. Guys only. Guys only. All lined up. About six of them. In the shade only. Yeah, that's what they want to do. I come to see these guys on my show. Oh, all of your stuff. I said all your stuff. I said all your stuff. Okay, let's get it all set up. Okay, you guys look a little stiff. Like, I got it. I got it. Looks pretty oh, good to me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Hold real still. Everybody look right here. Almost smiling. Yeah. Attention, Everyone girl. Attention. Jenny. Always make faces. That's me. Yeah. One more like it. Stay right in there for me. You're doing good. Another one like that. Another one like that. One. Looking right here. Two. Almost finished. We promise. One. Good. Now you want to get a shot with all the wives? Nice. Stay right where you are. Bring the wives. I don't have my wife. My wife can't You're in the middle. Well, that's all right. That's all right. I'm not a wife. The wives are right in front there. You want to get them all in my bed? Oh, go get a hug. I'm going to 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 get a hug. Jenny Leo's looking for a man. I'm uh, looking for a wife. I hear the How are you doing? He's excited to Oh, well, good. Then I'll just stay right here. There you go. Yeah, I'm just going to go. You got two wins. She gets you to the rear. Tell them what I'm going to do. I'm going to get out of here. 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 We're ready again. Here we go. Hey, everybody, say sex. Say big smiles. We're modern. Stay right there for me. Let me get a couple of them. Here we go. One. Not a one with a headache. Two. That one like it. Stay right there. We got that one. Stay right there for me. We're doing good. That's perfect one. We're right in here. A couple more like that. Almost Holy done. Cow. That There's a lot. We make sure we get you. We make sure we get you here. One. Hold real still for me. Two. Let me get you on video one second. Stay right there for me. You doing good? In video, you want me to make up? Yeah, one of those. <laughs> Let's get you all in here. We're the rowdies. The rest of them are kind of dull. Oh, something like that. I want to get you all on tape. We've got every voice on tape here. Hi. Yeah, that's it. Hi. Hi. That's right, right down the line. Oh, that's right, this video. Hi. Hi. It's all live there. Yay. Okay, you're all done. Thank you, thank you. Oh, my God. They are waiting. We've got you all on there, that's all. What do you need, Dad? Where are you going to go with us, Joe? Where are you going to go to? Yeah. Looks like it. Oh, that's yours, yeah. This, uh... That's a 378. That. that is cool. Bob, this is yours? Oh, that's a... Uh, Ryko or something. Ryko. They're all made, this same place. This is ours? Yes, that's ours. Here. <laughs> Yeah, I used to be stationed aboard a uh, ship just like this. Yeah. It, it was, uh, I was on the road. Evans? Yeah. Evans? Yeah. 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 Now, are you part of the uh, bus or are you part of the island? Or? No, that, I don't know. They were here. They were here. Admiral, 
this guy first, wouldn't even stand in front of the camera. You don't have anything to talk about, right? <laughs> Well, he said that the, he said that the, he was having problems with the doctor. Well, heck, we can't see anything. I talked to him the other night. How about Allie? He couldn't make it. Oh, not from Right close to Capitol on 31st day of the Oh, yeah. We, got the, we were down there yesterday, as a matter of fact. Had some friends from Ireland. Just a great day. You were that day. I remember that day. They turned the. They turned the. We had the best, best friggin', didn't we? Oh, Isn't that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. See, I told you. I just looked at a guy one time. And I was like, <laughs> These guys don't agree. They don't listen to him. Be a good politician. Don't listen. <laughs> By the way, the one of these that I got, and it's got a military band playing military music on one side and on the other, it's got all swing music here. Hey, there's a PA. Picture right there. Oh, you had that right in there? Right there. Now, yeah, this is the Ardenist Division. Let me see if I can get this thing to work. Hold on, what's that? What's that? You can't hold make it out. Yeah, right you have to hold the still over. Right there. See my little. See my patrol. My uh, petty officer's badge there. It's pretty good to me. Yeah. This is Lieutenant Norman. There's my boss right there. He's a school teacher in Washington, D.C. He's the one who sent me to school. He's the one to give me the rating as Lieutenant Garman. He was a real nice guy. <laughs> What ship was that? There I found my picture right there. This is our place to land. I had to stop my ship right there. I would have gone to the ship. Lieutenant Gorman. He's dead. He was a nice guy. I never know why we didn't I Sacramento, we had a good deal. He knew all about it. He was the master of ceremonies of the last year. So he knew all about it. So he had Roberta. Roberta called. Yeah. That's how we found out that there was such a problem. Everything from the Casper and I haven't found that yet. And how he pecked, yes. Will Hannah Beerman came back from Russia. 
We took oh, okay. we shipped a convoy out of Seattle up in that direction. Got up here, those people were starved. This one, this one, Germany was going into Stalingrad, full strength, and they had taken everything away from them. And we took about a box of carnival and strawberries out of here. They never seen the strawberries. Right? So this is what they